So yesterday I had a colonoscopy. If you've got Crohn's disease, normally you need to have a colonoscopy once every year just to make sure that everything's um, okay in your bowel. Um, I had a colonoscopy a couple of years ago and it had like a cobblestone effect in my bowel and that's how they actually found out that I had Crohn's disease. If you haven't watched my video about how I was diagnosed and misdiagnosed, you can go through my videos and see that one. And also there's a video a couple of weeks ago where I've actually talked about a flare up I had. Um, I had a flare up that's lasted probably two to three months. And if you've got Crohn's disease, you know what a flare up feels like. They're absolutely brutal and pretty much debilitating. <coughs> so, um, yeah, yesterday I had my scheduled, well, it wasn't scheduled for yesterday. I was actually scheduled for February, but because of COVID, it got pushed back because people with Crohn's disease, it's an autoimmune disease and people with autoimmune diseases are at a high risk of serious illness from COVID. Plus on top of that, I actually take immunosuppressant medication, which suppresses my immune system even further so I'm in the high risk category for COVID, <coughs> which is kind of scary, especially when you have to go to the hospital or go out into, yeah, I try not to go out too much. I've been staying in a bubble pretty much since um, April, I guess. Yeah, I try not to. You know, definitely no socialising with people that are from hotspot areas like Sydney and even down the coast at Batemans Bay, there was a hotspot due to people from Sydney going and having holidays there. So they just try to stay very safe and away from areas that have known COVID cases. Where in Australia, we're pretty lucky. There's not many cases compared to other places in the world. Um, so yeah, my scheduled colonoscopy was in February. It's been pushed back all the way to September. And like I said, from June, July, August, I had a flare up pretty much that lasted three months. I took um, steroids to calm it down and to get rid of it, but that didn't really work. So I had to take a longer course. And due to taking a longer course of steroids, your immune system gets suppressed even more, which puts you at a higher risk of other things like shingles, which is in your system from chickenpox. And I actually got shingles, um, I think last year because of taking the steroids, it suppresses your immune system. So you have to, um, yeah, be really careful. So yeah, the colonoscopy. So preparation for the colonoscopy means five days before the colonoscopy you have to change your diet so you can just eat white bread white rice pasta chicken with no skin eggs <coughs> no pulpy fruit juice so you can just have clear juice you can have jelly so for three days pretty much all that was bread chicken and eggs then two days before the co two days no, one day before the colonoscopy, you have to stop eating. <clears throat> so today is Tuesday. So on Sunday, I stopped eating food. So I didn't eat. The last time I ate, ate was on Saturday night at about 9.30. So Sunday, all I could have was fruit juice and jelly. And so that was Sunday. And then the worst part <clears throat> before the prep you have to have this stuff called glyco prep so you essentially have to flush out your bowel so at 5 p.m i had to drink a liter of this mixture called glyco prep which makes you evacuate everything from your system like from your bowel so you drink that and then within like 30 minutes 45 minutes you're on the toilet and then you're still on backwards and forwards on the toilet probably an hour, an hour and a half after drinking it. So that was at five. I was still going to the toilet, we'll say at 8.30 at night. Then 
you have to actually have another glass of glyco, another liter of glyco prep, and that was at 9 p.m. So then from that drink, <clears throat> same thing, you go into the toilet constantly. I was going to the toilet till probably 12 a.m. And then I went to sleep. And then I had to wake up in the morning of the colonoscopy and have another litre of the glyco prep. And I was at 5 a.m. So that night I got pretty much four hours sleep because I couldn't go to sleep. I probably didn't go to sleep till 1 a.m. Woke up at 5 a.m., had the glyco prep. And same thing, going to the toilet up until about 9, I guess. And then it's a one-hour drive for me from where I live to the regional hospital, which is the hospital that does surgeries and stuff like that. So I had to get my stepdad to drive me to the hospital. We left here at 10.15. We got there at like 11.25. Um... Then my surgery was booked for 125. And so the whole day yesterday <clears throat> from 9 a.m., that's when I had to stop drinking liquids. So I spent a whole day not eating any food, just drinking and, and liquids. And then yesterday, 9 a.m., I had to stop all liquids. My surgery was booked for 125. But I actually didn't go into surgery, I think, until about 3 o'clock. And it is just absolutely draining. If you've ever not eaten, and even the three days before that where you actually change your diet. So if you're used to having sugars in your diet, when you change your diet for three days and have no sugars, you actually get like a sugar headache, a withdrawal headache. And so I had a massive headache from like withdrawal from sugars then yesterday from not being able to drink and a day of no eating, I was just absolutely drained and exhausted. So my surgery was at, at about three, I think. And I didn't, so that's when I like went under. And then I actually didn't wake up in recovery until 5 p.m. And so then from 5 p.m. I was really sleepy until about 5 30 and that's when I was able to eat a sandwich and have some fluids which was fantastic so then 6 p.m. I was released and my stepdad picked me up like he was waiting at the hospital all day and then we drove back and I got home at like 7 so it was just a massively exhausting day and so I've got the results here from the colonoscopy, and like I said before, a colonoscopy I had where I got diagnosed, <clears throat> I actually had cobblestone effect in my terminal ilium, which is on the right-hand side, your right, lower right-hand side of your <clears throat> stomach of your bowel. And like I also mentioned, I'd had a flare-up that I had for three months previous to this colonoscopy. Um, if you've seen the other video I did on it, I actually did a cow protection test where it's like a feces test and my inflammation markers were like through the roof for that. So, yeah, the final report. So they found an aphthous, aphthous ulcer, five centimeters so five centimeters is pretty big, <clears throat> an ulcer in my terminal ilium. I hadn't had any ulcers in my bowel before, and I was a bit up. I was a bit concerned, to be honest, when I googled it, because ulcers in your stomach can lead to um, like bowel cancer and stuff like that. So it's a little bit daunting, but. They took a biopsy of it, so I'm not going to find out from my specialist probably for maybe a month I might have, have to go see him or I, I don't know, I haven't booked that in yet. And then they also found a, a Cecil polyp, S-E-S-S-I-L-E -S 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 -E polyp found in the sigmoid colon. And it was six millimeters in size 
and it was removed via cold snare resection and retrieval was completed so I've googled what that type of polyp is it's not like like a stick polyp it's like a flat little polyp which yeah is not a good thing as well but then the rest of the colonoscopy went fine there was no evidence of active disease which is fantastic and there was no perianal disease which is fantastic as well but obviously I'm still in um, pain and discomfort from the ulcer, the five centimeter ulcer in my side because yeah, it's just brutal. I don't know, I'd love to have known what my bowel looked like during the flare up because during a flare up it is excruciating and debilitating pain. So I don't actually know yeah, what it must have looked like when I was at my worst like two months ago. Where now, I'm not actually too bad. All right, so that wraps that up. Yeah, I'm a bit distressed knowing that there's an ulcer in there and polyps at the same time. Um, but there's nothing I can do about it. I just have to wait to see the specialist and hope everything turns out good. So, yeah, that is my Crohn's disease colonoscopy update. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to. The colonoscopy. Yeah, I, just today... I have to take it easy for a couple of days because obviously they took a little chunk out of my bowel and there's still an ulcer in there. And when they do a colonoscopy, they expand your bowel. So I've still got a bit of um, pain and discomfort from on my lower back on the right side and the front side. So, yeah, but fingers crossed when I see the specialist, all the um, results of the biopsies are good. That's all I can hope for. All right, well, Crohn's disease people, hopefully this interests some of you out there because I know there's lots of people with Crohn's disease. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.